got Antonio Banderas over here, tonight's special Friday guest. <laughs> He's attempting to make a difference to the Spanish film industry. Tell us about that. Well, I, I'm trying to make a difference. I don't know. I did, but sometimes it's not that I try. I think I've been very lucky in my career, um, especially with uh, me going to Hollywood. It was the, f the first Spanish actor that actually made it there and stayed there for a long time. But it was kind of an accident, uh, in a way. And uh, it was there with um, Almodovar's movie that was uh, actually uh, nominated for an Academy Award. And a number of circumstances happened because I never thought that I was going to end up there. The, it made me work for the first time mm. in America without even speaking the language. I had to learn uh, English just to do my first American movie. So that made a difference, probably yes, because many actors saw that as uh, something that was possible. Probably they said, if this guy could do it, I can do it. And but, but your new movie, you, you've, you've produced it via Spain, haven't you? You put yes. money back into mm. the economy. Yeah, in a way, I came back and I tried just to all the things that I have learned there, and especially in the animation world that I started working in 2003 with uh, DreamWorks, I uh, tried to just apply to the company that I, that I have been just uh, participating since, uh, uh, with, since uh, 10 years ago. And this is our third actually product. We did two feature movies, uh, a short movie in the middle that was nominated for an Academy Award in, in Los Angeles, and now we are presenting this. It's very artisanal work. We don't have the monies that you can have in Hollywood. This is done with sweat, a lot of blood, a lot of sacrifices, <laughs> you know? Well, it was worth it, because Justin and the Knights of Valor, I saw it earlier on, it's a great film. Thank you. Do you want to know what the plot is? Well, here's the thing, how about this for a game? Okay. Okay, because I know you like your games, don't you? So here we go. You start to describe the film, Fine. and then Antonio, you finish off describing the film. So, okay, then. So, the hero in the film is called Justin. Yeah. He's a little boy who looks a bit like you. Oh, poor thing. <laughs> He's a redhead, doesn't he? Yes. With the same <laughs> colour eyes. Identical. And he is on... <laughs> He's better behaved than Chris. He's on a quest to become a knight. Right, is that right? So far, are you obstacles. happy with that? That's, that's pretty much Continue, it. please. Well, it's a, it's a movie that actually engulfs adventure, humour and principle, values. I think that's important because when you are presenting a movie for kids, for children, you have to have a big amount of entertainment, but on the other hand, you have to actually be educational. And the movie has these two sides uh, very well in balance, I think. There's a very good message there. Yes, absolutely. And the characters jump off the screen. Uh, you play Sir <laughs> Clorox. Uh, let's see you voice in the character first. Let's see it. I shall use my skills, my muscular body, and my noble soul to defend what is right and fair. Yes! <laughs> Energetic, isn't it? You know, you've got to put it's, a lot of energy in. I got a lot of energy, yeah, yeah no doubt about that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, when I did uh, Puss in Boots, it's funny because I saw the character when they just introduced me to the character. It was very little, just uh, the draw uh, that they uh, show me. And I thought that the idea was just to provide him with a voice that doesn't actually match the body. There was a dichotomy in a way. Mm. You know, the character like this, with a voice like that. Yeah. And that produced comedy. In this character, I did exactly the opposite. The, opposite. the guy is massive. <laughs> with muscles and everything, and I put a voice that is very high. <laughs> <laughs> let's have a look, yeah. should we have a look? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, let's see how it all worked out. Wow. All right. What Just now? look at that. Who are you? I have never seen such beauty and masculinity in one man before. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 but wait. <laughs> oh. There, and that's a better. Hmm. Oh, Angel, did it hurt when you fell from heaven? <laughs> Works every time. I was concerned to hear from well, Reginald that young Justin is missing. He's not. Very good. Well done. Yes, Looks good, good, my friend. <laughs> He's an imposter. He's an imposter. He's a hideous. Yeah. Uh, this character, but he's actually sweet in the back of, uh, of his soul. You he's know. like a camp ladies' man. No, he's he, he's <laughs> a man that probably had a dream one day he Aww. couldn't fulfill, and now he's just uh, faking. Everything. Therein lies it's the tragedy. Life. Fake it till you yeah, make it. Tragic um, character. Justin and the Knights of Valor is out next Friday on the 13th of September. All right, how's the gorgeous? How's it doing over there? Muy bien. How long we got? Cinco minutos. Sorry, what's that in English? Five minutes. Five minutes. I thought it was. I thought <laughs> it was. <laughs> thank you, thank you. What a joy tapas dishes are. What started out as small bar snacks for Spanish drinkers have become a mainstay of trendy British restaurants. 
But some British diners remain to be convinced. Ironically, it's here in southern Spain among the expat British community that I found some of the most ardent tapas dodges. I've come to Benel Madna on the Costa del Sol. It's a top holiday destination for us British, so there's no shortage of familiar food available. Sue Aspie runs the Wigan Bar, and even after 14 years, the menu remains all Manchester, no Malaga. Tell me about the customers you get here. I would say certainly 90% British. They like their pies, they like their cotton chips, they love their breakfasts. What do you think would happen if you put more Spanish dishes on your menu? I think if it was a big Spanish menu, I'd lose a lot of my clientele. Her British customers know what they like, like what they know. You don't ever think of uh, going for a Spanish breakfast? No, I don't make like Spanish. No, you don't do that? Don't do the Spanish food? No. How long have you guys lived out here? About four years. Seafood, big thing? Not really. Not really? Not like tea. I think British people like British food. Not really into Spanish food. Not really into Spanish food. I find it baffling that British people here ignore so much fantastic local food, especially the wonderful seafood that comes fresh from these shores. So for a bit of fun, I'm getting Sue to swap this afternoon's British menu for some Spanish delights. I've even brought my own chef with me. Omar Aliboy runs tapas restaurants in London and he's determined to inspire Sue's cook, Jamie, with his passion for local cuisine. We come to the market for inspiration. You know, uh, that's how we get creative, because you are able to see what's in season, what's fresh. I see those beautiful figs, and I want to do a salad with them. Back at the Wigan you know, Bar, Omar shows here, Jamie yes, how to turn unfamiliar and, uh, ingredients this is sort into of a perfect tapas. Chorizo, okay. a Spanish and cured sausage braised with cider. You simply pour it on the chorizo and let it simmer away. How is that? Is <laughs> Classic tapas include combinations of fried potatoes, cured and braised meats and shellfish, and each region has its own specialities. Yes, that's good. It's often as simple as griddled prawns or deep-fried squid. Try the squid. Fried squid. Oh, interesting. I'm sure you will like it. You like fish and chips? I do. This is an improved version of that. OK. <laughs> A quick coating of flour and the squid goes straight in the fryer. Our tapas menu is completed with a tangy fig and blue cheese salad and beef skewers marinated with cumin and paprika. It's definitely a lot easier than what I thought it was than going you to be. Thought, isn't it? Brilliant. So can the British clientele be persuaded to swap black pudding and fried egg for prawns and chorizo? Can I interest you in a little bit of squid? No, thank you. Not the sort of thing you want to eat? No, thank you. Fair enough, I get the message. Mm. It's only got tentacles, what's wrong with that? There's no eyes. That's all right, that. Is that all right? The crispy bit. That's the least enthusiastic. It's not that. <laughs> it's the texture of the, the seafood. It's, it's, quite like, it's got a spice to it, hasn't it? Mm. Is there a proper way to do this? No! That is magnificent. It's sweet. Um, I can cheese the sea, which is what it's all about. Marvellous. There's a convert. But what about Sue, the owner? Mm. Very, very tasty. Very nice. So there could be a place for it on your menu? I'd certainly try it. Brilliant for and business. see what happens, yeah. Don't burn OK, <laughs> OK. We're stuck into the paella. We're sorry about our fellow countrymen and women there, but we're... We're trying to have a word with them. This is Omar, he's got a book out. What's your book called? Tapas Revolution. OK, and we've got a somewhat of a paella revolution going on here in the studio. This show has never smelt so good. No, never. Well, Hopefully. which is difficult because Chris Evans is here. No, yeah, exactly. No, you're absolutely right. <laughs> I understand. I so, Antonio, question here for Omar, because I know you love your paella. It's very bad, man. You're fired. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's very bad. Very good. <laughs> I'm glad so what did you put in the paella? Because the paella is different every time, you know? Every person can do... Every family cooks it differently. In this yeah. case, it's a paella valenciana just with meat. It has chicken, rabbit, of course, saffron, oh, Spanish rice, oh, man, olive excellent. oil, and a few Spanish vegetables. OK, tell us why the, the saffron, mm. tell us what's special about the rice also. 
Uh, saffron, uh, well, it's a very expensive, it is uh, unbelievably expensive, expensive because of the aroma. It's all about the aroma. It's like truffle. You, right. you are not going to eat it, you are going to smell it. And uh, the rice, well, Spanish rice is the most expensive again in the world because it is the one which absorbs more water. The more water you can absorb, the more flavor you can absorb. Right. And that's what makes paella as well very special. It's not about the rest of the ingredients, but it's about the rice. And it's almost the opposite of risotto when you make it because it's about leaving it alone, isn't it? Yes. Now it's it's resting, uh, you know, and it will be good for the next five minutes. And we say in Spain, you wait for the paella in the table, the paella will never wait for you. That's why we understand. I, that's why I'm gonna take this to my hotel today. <laughs> Okay. Right. You, you make paella every Sunday, don't you? I do, paella. I do. And you can knock one of these, you're pretty good at this stuff? It's quite different. Because, for example, the shrimps in America, for whatever reason, they don't like to see the head of the shrimps on the shrimp. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's one of those American things. So I have to go to the Chinese market to get those ones. Yeah. So I don't have the same ingredients, but I do paella okay. every morning. You approve? Yeah. Happy? Sunday morning. It's very good. Okay. Yeah, we need to get over there. Yeah, really. I mean, Roma, can you just step it up so we can get over there? Okay, ready? Here we are. Um, here we are. That is brilliant. Fantastic. So we've got some tapas here from the region where you're from. Yes. Uh, obviously we've got tortilla here. Can you explain to us what these other dishes are? Yes, I can. This is a, a Spanish tortilla, a Spanish omelette. Um, basically, it has potatoes and sometimes cebolla. Uh, yes, in onions. this case. And um, it's a very typical uh, dish. These are uh, caballa, mm -hmm. which is kind of a tuna. Yeah. In escabeche, escabeche is a process in which you put it in oil for a long time and it just becomes very flavorful, whatever it's you like put in the oil. First. Yes, you know? it's mackerel. That's okay. the, that's the okay. one. This is from my, my hometown. And this reminds you of your childhood. Oh, yeah. Uh, my mother's, you know, uh, boquerones and vinagres. You have to leave them in vinegar for at least 24 hours and they are excellent. You what know. about the olive oil? Is that very special, isn't it, the olive oil? Very important. Yeah, well, once you take them out of the bean, uh, as he said, you put garlic, parsley and olive oil, and you leave them like, like this, you can, can stay for two months. And if you can afford a better olive oil, you should really go for a good quality olive oil. Definitely, and Spanish being the biggest producer in the world, you yeah. mm -hmm. go for it. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that they call you boquerones. In Malaga. In Malaga. The malagueños, uh, we are called boquerones. Yeah. Huh? Even yeah. in soccer teams, our soccer team is called the boqueron team. In, in Malaga. So yeah. I am football. one of those guys. You're a huge Real Madrid fan, aren't you? What do you think oh. about the Gareth Bale thing? The what? Gareth Bale going to Real Madrid is... Um, um, I, I think it's good. If good. he plays, well, good. It, <laughs> if he plays uh, good, it's good. If he plays bad, out of the country. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's a Welsh boy, I'm told All right, Mr and Mrs Bale, I hope you listen there. <laughs> so, tomorrow night is the last night of the proms. And the from Britannia back to Espania, okay? Yes. Uh, you're about to play uh, Spain. Espania. Yeah, very good. Okay. That's ours, by the way. You can, you can have your paella, <laughs> but leave that alone. So you're about to play Picasso, Pablo Picasso. Yes, it's One a project. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. And it's called 33 Days. 33 Days. Why? Because that's the time that Pablo Picasso um, spent to paint uh, the Guernica painting. It was uh, actually um, the Spanish Republic in the middle of the Civil War that asked Picasso to, to paint a mural, which was not his specialty, actually, mm. but he uh, decided to do it after the Guernica bombing that he saw in the newspapers, and he employed 33 days to paint that uh, beautiful painting now in history of the Spanish, uh, you know. And you've not started making this picture yet? No, not yet. It's going to be directed by Carlos Saura, who is uh, one of our most prominent directors. Um, the photography is going to be made by um, Vittorio Storaro, who is a legend of photography. And probably, probably Gwyneth Paltrow is going to play the character of Dora Mar, uh, one of the women of Picasso. Picasso right. had many women. And because it's interesting for me and kind of emotional in a way because Picasso was born only three blocks from where I, I was born in Malaga. Sounds it's, brilliant. It does sound It's a beautiful good. project. It's a beautiful project and uh, it's a reflection about the Spanish Civil War and the times that Europe was living in 1937, yeah. um, about the tribulations of Picasso in his personal life. It's a beautiful project that I would like just to, to chew. Yeah. Well, please come back and talk about it when it's Thank out. You. It'd be nice to see you again. Yeah. You? Um, and the other thing is, because it's all happening in your house, your stepdaughter, Dakota Johnson, mm -hmm. has landed the main role in Fifty Shades of Grey. What? As what? <laughs> what? Now, as what? a stepdad, have you read it, Antonio? Do we know I read what book, Dakota's yeah. going in for here? You... I read the book. What are we thinking here, Dad? <laughs> well, uh, I respect her very much. She is a very mature girl. Mm -hmm. um, she has to make her choices. Yeah. 
as uh, Mama did at some point. Um, they call me Paponio. Oh, yeah. Paponio. Paponio is Papa and Antonio. Paponio, oh, all that's together. Cute. That's cute. Uh, but um, but I, I trust her judgment. Yes. And I think um, it's a great opportunity for her. Of course, it's going to be a controversial movie, but um, but I am I'm confident that she's going to just take the right decisions. And uh, yes. Great. Wow. Oh. She got our approval. Okay, we got back to little pussy cats now. Ready for the cute pussy cats? Okay.